and Paul were constantly going back and forth. In fact, it was a dizzying degree. And they would, let's say, uh, borrow things from some of the hospitals to improve the situation in Haiti. Actually, the first sink we had at the lab was bought by Paul from, from Boston. That was a clip from Bending the Ark. It's a new documentary that chronicles the journey of some idealistic young doctors who helped change the way public health issues are addressed, especially in developing nations, to the benefit of millions. And for this week's Morning Rounds, CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook sat down with two of the film's key figures in the documentary. How long do you guys know each other? December 1983. 34 years. 34 years. Would you ever have imagined that you'd be where you are now? I definitely would have imagined Jim as president of the World Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jim Young Kim and Dr. Paul Farmer attended medical school together at Harvard in the 1980s. It's there in Boston where the foundation for their life's work would take shape. You have to continue to ask, okay, now what's the most important thing I can do uh, to really lift people out of poverty, to provide health care, education, provide them jobs? And it sustained us and it sustained the group. Alongside like minded people such as Dr. Ophelia Dahl, the nonprofit yeah, health organization Partners in Health was born. Their story is told in a new documentary, Bending the Ark. There was an arc from just the few of you meeting so many years ago to where you are now. What does bending the ark mean? So it's a, it's a saying. I mean, Martin Luther King used to talk about that the arc of history is long, but it bends toward justice. But for us, I think the lesson has been that it, if you look at Martin Luther King's life, the arc of history doesn't bend toward justice unless people grab the arc and bend it toward justice. A common theme throughout the movie and, and their lives has been fighting suspicions. conventional wisdom. There was one especially poignant moment in the film. There was a young man who was on death's door. He had drug-resistant tuberculosis. Tell me about that. So I had first seen Melchiades in 2006, and I was there for a short visit, and I participated uh, in his care. I participated in trying to get him to stay on his therapy. And frankly, in 2006, when I left, I didn't think he was going to make it. Melchiades Hawaii did indeed make it. At one point in the film, Dr. Kim has shown video of what his old patient from Peru looks like now. That, that, that's when you see something like that, it's amazing to see the recovery, but is there also sort of like a, a fury? Yeah. My reaction first was, uh, was to weep, but then my second reaction was really uh, admonishing ourselves because we almost let him go. And so the thought that I had right at that moment is, can you believe we almost were too late? Can you believe we almost left out Melchiades? And, and it was sort of... I believe you added, because it was inconvenient. And, and we, so much of that happens. I mean, uh, when, when it comes to the lives of the poor, uh, so much of the worst things that happen to them uh, happen because good people embrace the conventional wisdom and turn their heads away. Dr. Farmer has done anything but look away. I saw that firsthand five years ago, walking the halls of a new teaching hospital Partners in Health helped build in Haiti. I remember an exact quote from you. You said, it's about time. As you saw yourself after the earthquake, conventional wisdom was that this was not a ranking priority to build an academic medical center after such devastation. But if it's not a ranking priority then, when would, it, when would it be? Making it a priority paid off. Just a few years after the hospital opened, conjoined twins were successfully separated, a first in Haiti. Thinking globally has been part of their approach from the start. Five years ago, Dr. Kim became president of the World Bank. I think the work that Paul continues to do in building these health systems, building schools, uh, building uh, houses, uh, this is the right thing for investing everybody. In investing in people yeah. in the poorest countries is, in fact, uh, a critically important thing to do for the global economy, but certainly for the world that our children and grandchildren will live in. A lot has been accomplished in the 34 years since they met, but both are aware of the heavy lifting that remains. This piling up of innovation for some people and privation for others. And, you know, that's a, I would say that's the biggest problem we have facing 
medicine is these disparities that affect every field. As we look back on the civil rights era, as we look back on the era in which we weren't going to treat the 25 million people living with HIV in Africa, young people today say, oh, God, can you believe we thought that? I think the task for every young person today is to ask themselves, what are the things that we're doing or not doing today that in 20 years we'll look back and say, oh, can you believe that's the way we thought? Partners in Health does amazing, amazing work. These two men are so impressive, so impressive. Documentary is Bending the Arc.